Imagine that you have built the perfect query inside of Power Query. And you have spent days figuring out how to exactly get your data into that right shape. Now, that new data comes. And this new data is not on the sheet that you used as a source for your query, but it's on a different sheet. Now, what are your options? Well, one option would be to copy over the data from one sheet to the other. However, it is not very elegant and you would have to redo that every single time you have new data on a new sheet. Then as a second option, we could also duplicate the query that we have built and then update the source tab and then use the append transformation to combine the two queries. However, also here, we would have to redo that every single time we have new data on a new sheet. Now, of course, there needs to be a more elegant way of solving this, and that is through custom functions. Let's see how that works. Welcome to How to Power BI. My name is Bust, and if this is the very first time for you visiting this channel, then make sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to stay up to date on all of my videos in which I share everything I know about Power BI. Now let's have a look how we can combine data from different sheets in an Excel workbook. Step one, well, we need to connect to our Excel workbook, so let's do that first. And in our workbook, we have different data sets, not all of the data sets we want to combine, only those where we have the year in the sheet name. So 2019, 2020, and 2021. Okay, so I'm going to connect, first of all, to that sheet for 2019. Okay, now let's transform the data. So we go to Power Query. And let's first take the data that's on the sheet 2019 to build a query that we can then reuse. We first gonna get rid of these last few steps Let's change the data type and promote the headers. Now we have to add a few transformations. So let's remove those first couple of rows and I want to remove the first three. Okay, now I can promote the headers. So let's go to transform and use the first row as headers. Now, here in the first column, we have the different regions. So I'm going to fill it down so that we don't have the nulls. And now we can rename over here this first column to region and the second one, there we have the months and we do not want to have the total rows in there. So that's going to be a filter. So let's filter that out. And now we can then unpivot those bean type columns. Okay. Now I'm going to transform and then choose here, unpivot other columns. Now we have our data almost in the shape that we want it to be. Just a few more transformations. For example, here we can rename then this column to bean type. And over here, the values, these are the production amounts. Now, imagine that this is the query that you spent so much time on building and you want to reuse it for other sheets that are added to the workbook. For, for example, here, the year 2020 and 21. Now, then we can turn this into a function. Before we're going to do that, let's first duplicate the query. And for this second query, we're going to remove all of the other steps. So let's click them away. So that we are only left with the source tab. Now here in the source tab, you see all of the sheets and tables and named ranges that are inside of your Excel work. And what we want to do is we want to take the data in the nested tables for the sheets 2019, 2020 and 21 and combine those. I'm going to rename this one to consolidate a data set. Now, as we already have built a query that transforms the data set for 2019, and we want to apply the same transformations to 2020 and 21, we can turn the 2019 query into a function. Now let's go to the query for 2019 and then click on view, advanced editor, and then now here we want to remove the very first two lights where we first connect to our Excel file and then navigate to the 2019 sheet. Okay, so those we don't need. We want to start off by removing the rows. That was the very first transformation that we applied to the 2019 data set. Now here there is a reference to the previous step, which is basically the 2019 table. And we want to replace that with a variable, with an input parameter. Now, let's call this parameter sheet name. 
And to turn this now into a function, we simply have to go in front of the LAT statement and then put in between brackets the name of a parameter. So sheet name, and then it goes to operator. So equal sign and then a bigger than sign. And that's it. Now let's click on done. And you see the icon change. Now we have a function. And let's rename this function and call this one transform sheet. Now first we need to make sure that we remove all of the sheets that we don't want to combine the data of. For example here the intro example and the coffee orders, those we need to delete. Now this can be done through a filter, so let's go to the item column, drop down and put a text filter in place and let's say that the sheet name needs to start off with 20. So now we have only those sheets that we want to combine the data of and all of the transformations that we want to apply to the nested tables that you find in the data column, well, those transformations we have in a function called transform sheet. So let's invoke the function. Let's go to add column, invoke custom function, and then here we can say what the new column name should be. Now, this is going to be our transformed data. The function that we want to use, well, transform sheet, and here the sheet name, well, that is in the data column. Well, let's click on OK. And you see, this returns also nested tables. And if you click in the blank space right next to it, then you see at the bottom, you have the transformed data set for each single year. So before we expand the data sets and combine them, we want to remove all of the columns except the transformed data column. And you also want to keep the name column because the name column has the name of the sheet and it's basically the only place where we have the information about which year the data belongs to. So let's keep those two and click on remove other columns. Now we can go to the transform data column, click on expand and over here we do not want to keep the original column as a prefix. Okay and there you go. We now have combined data sets for the years 2019, 2020 and 21. Now, just a few more steps to finish it off. Now here, we want to combine the month and the year column. So let's select the two and let's go to transform and merge these columns. Now here we can use the space as a separator and the new column name is gonna be date. And let's click on okay. And now we can apply then different data types. So let's select the columns and then go to transform, the tag data type. That's it, we have used the query that we spent so much time on building for 2019 for the years 2020, 21, and all of the future years to come. So you see that custom functions are not only limited to number values as an input and output. You can also give it a whole table, apply transformations, and then have a table as an output. If you found this content useful, then consider subscribing, and I hope to see you in the next video.